Hello and welcome to Doordarsha News. I am Sadhan Sibyl. In next half an hour, I will take you to a journey from Delhi to London via Dreamliner, touted to be the machine which can change the face of aviation industry forever. But how will it change? Our journey begins now. With high hopes and expectations, I move. Make my steps towards one of the most advanced commercial airliners, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. I'm pretty much decked up and my journey has just begun. I'm very excited. Let's hope this Dreamliner journey will be a historic one. So the Maharaja beckons us, uh, we are entering the airplane, the Dreamliner, and look at it. I've taken my seats. The seats are really very comfortable and if you look around, it's very spacious. The plane from inside looks more spacious and comfortable. The aisles have space enough to walk easily and while people take their seats, the crew guides them. By now, ministers and officials start entering. So the civil aviation minister himself boarding the plane. So any first thoughts before w Welcome plane? abroad. And we get ready for the takeoff. Takeoff towards London. But why such halabaloo over the Dreamliner? Well, that's because Air India's new turnaround plan hinges upon it. But like all good stories, there were some anxious moments too. Let's revisit January 2013. The aircraft suffered from early in-service problems, notably fires on board related to its lithium-ion batteries. Soon America's Federal Aviation Administration issued an emergency airworthiness directive that grounded all 787s in the US. 
Soon, Europe's European Aviation Safety Agency, Japan's Transport Industry, India's Directorate General of Civil Aviation, and Chile's DGAC followed suit and grounded the Dreamliners in their jurisdictions. Was the dream over? Well, in fact, no. Boeing has since worked to develop new battery housing to prevent a repeat of the incidents. The dream flew again in mid-May. That was 15th of May, almost four months after the planes were grounded due to safety concerns. Chairman of Air India Rohit Nandan in a press briefing that month gave a thumbs up to the Dreamliner. He also said Air India is open to selling all eight of its Boeing 777 passenger aircrafts and is seeking Boeing's help in talks with potential buyers. The plan is that we would be replacing all the 777LR flights with 787. And as you know, it has been talked about in the press extensively that the turnaround plan of, India, of Air India is largely, is largely based on the 787 operations. We treat that as our work workhorse. And we were very happy with its operations before it was grounded. And uh, we are very hopeful and optimistic that the good days that we saw with the 787s would be now fully restored. Nandan said that all technical snags in Dreamliners have been mended and the Dreamliner also got clearance from the APEC civil aviation body in India. Now the technical issues have been taken care of. The FA has given its approval. The local regulator of India, the DGCA, has also given its approval. We have got all the clearances that we required from whatever bodies were required. Our pilots are trained and therefore we have started the, with the flights today. The Dreamliner's superior economic performance is expected to give a boost to Air India's turnaround plan. The Dreamliner is low on operating cost and maintenance cost. It consumes 15% less fuel than current aircrafts in same category. Air India has six Dreamliners and has ordered 21 more. Optimistic about aircraft's performance, civil aviation experts Harsh Vardhan said that it would prove to be a market leader and a game changer. I think this setback should be uh, now uh, forgotten like a bad dream and we should look forward to a better and upcoming uh, um, uh, operations of this aircraft. This aircraft, there is no doubt, is going to be the market leader in its category and um, this will change the way the world travels. Soon world over Dreamliners flew again. United Continental resumed its Boeing 787 Dreamliner service from its Houston base. Japan's All Nippon Airways carried out its first commercial flight with Dreamliner fleet after more than four months of suspension. Today, nine airlines have at least one Dreamliner in their fleet. These airlines are Japan's All Nippon Airways and Japan Airlines, Ethiopia's Ethiopian Airlines, India's Air India, Chile's Land Airlines, America's United Airlines, Qatar Airways, Poland's Lord Polish Airlines and China's China Southern Airlines. And now back from that short story, inside the Dreamliner, people are enjoying themselves, but what makes it apart from rest of the aircrafts? First, it's spacious. Wide cabins of the Dreamliner provide a spacious environment for passengers. In economy class, aisles are 21 inches wide. That's more than 2 inches wider than a typical two-aisle airplane. Same goes for business class, where aisles are 25 inches. It has a wide and comfortable seats. Windows on 787s are largest of any airplane flying today. Passenger in any seat of the airplane enjoys a view to the horizon. The window shades above the 787 are dramatically different from those on other commercial jetliners. Windows are dimmable. Electrochromatic window shades, not physical shades, allow passengers to dim the windows. From windows to seats, let's go to the luggage bins. Well, much has been said about the spaciousness of this aircraft. Let's check out the spaciousness. This is uh, the upper portion where people can keep their uh, 
लगेज एंड वेल इट्स वेरी स्पेशियस एंड वेरी ओपन Overall architecture of 787 welcomes a passenger on board. The tall dramatically lit entryways overhead creates a sense of the sky, reinforcing the fact that passengers have arrived in a new space. The cabin air also has a better quality due to an innovative purification method known as gaseous filtration. And now to my favorite part, the in-house entertainment system. One has a choice of 50 movies, 130 TV shows, 60 music CDs, 10 PC games and much more. Well, it's been four hours since I left for New Delhi. Right now, I'm over Tehran, the capital city of uh, uh, Iran, and uh, my flight will now go towards Caspian Sea, then to Russian Federation, to Europe, and finally to London. Four hours time, I'll be in London. Meanwhile, uh, the entertainment system in uh, on board the air, uh, plane is extremely nice. They have a number of nice movies, English, Hindi, and also regional movies from Telugu, Kannada, Punjabi. So after checking out the features and the internal dynamics of the Dreamliner, it's time to meet the man of the moment, Civil Aviation Minister Ajit Singh, and I started asking him about the Dreamliner itself. I'm on board Air India's airline uh, AL115 from Delhi to uh, London. It's a Dreamliner, and with me is the man of the moment, the Civil Aviation Minister Ajit Singh. So welcome to Blue Darshan News. So Dreamliner. So my first question associated with it: How can Dreamliner change the fortune for our national carrier, Air India? Uh, in a sense, you are right. Dreamliner is just one of the components of our plan to make Air India profitable. There are many other problems with them earlier. Uh, the kind number of offices they have, number of unproductive assets they have, number of employees they have. the load factor and all kind and profitable route so if but air this dreamliner is a very important uh, component of their plan to become profitable because for technologically it's a new generation airplanes fuel accounts to about 50% of operating cost and we expect uh, the air india will be saving wherever they fly dreamliner about 20% saving in fuel costs so but initially we saw there were some hiccups for four months uh, dreamliner was grounded across the world yes. don't you say that apprehension see any time new technology comes you go back to the 320s and everything any time there is a technological innovation some hiccups are there that's expected so now coming uh, to the larger sector the aviation sector so just enumerate three big things which your ministry has done in last four years see first thing uh, we did is uh, that is four years or five years or so uh, big international standard airports bombay delhi bangalore hyderabad uh, and uh, kochi second thing is that we allowed uh, private airlines to fly to the neighboring countries or anywhere wherever we have bilaterals earlier we were only air india was mostly flying there so that's why number of now see in last uh, year and a half only we have uh, allotted 81000 seats to neighboring countries to the indian uh, carriers and we are almost uh, equivalent to the foreign carriers as far as the number of seats that are allotted uh, second thing is uh, we have lot of problems with dgca in the sense the sector has grown so fast that uh, dgca requires lot of new technical uh, people and all that and going through that government procedure hiring them and training them and the salary scales and all that is very cumbersome process so we are planning to make dgca call it civil aviation authority give them financial autonomy which means uh, they will not be dependent on government for their budget uh, so my next question will be on the national career when do you think that the maharaja will regain its past glory well if you look at it young man the days of maharajas are gone <laughs> from that point of view uh, it's a very tough competitive environment all over the world you see the national careers are not there anymore 
but here government is a big stake in Air India and uh, we have also make it, made it very clear that government is not in a position and will not provide any more subsidy or anything. Whatever money we are providing now also depends on their meeting the milestones. Every three months the committee, oversight committee with finance and all a kind of members looks at the results. So, but uh, you must have heard about this, that Emirates have now become the de facto airline's national carrier of the country. How did this happen in a sense? See, we didn't have the facilities. We, we were the big airports. You are right, not only Emirates, if you look at uh, Singapore, if you look at Lufthansa, if you look at Hong Kong uh, Airlines, uh, even other uh, Gulf countries, because we didn't have that hub thing. And what is more, the, our international flight, basically, uh, there were a lot of problems. And now we are facing uh, that problem again, because uh, Kingfisher was flying abroad, it's uh, no longer flying. Uh, that leaves only two companies which fly abroad, which is uh, JET and the Air India. And now, in the last year or so, the domestic passenger have declined slightly, but international traffic is growing. So how to meet that demand? That's the question. Air India doesn't have the capacity right now. It's growing now a little bit, but still. It, can, it doesn't fly to Australia, Europe, USA, many places. Asia, it doesn't fly at all. African continent, it doesn't fly. So that's why these airlines, uh, they develop their hubs, their airports, they're flying to all those places. So that's why they have grown. So but my, now that we have these airports, and we recently cabinet cleared the hub policy also, and now that uh, air, this thing, uh, jet will be flying from 23 places in India, we are there a hub abroad to many destinations in the world. So international, and then it will provide the jet at the art deal should provide more competition also for international passengers especially. So things are slowly improving. So my last question is, fuel <coughs> contributes a big portion of input cost on airlines. Yes. Many believe if the taxation structure of the country is improved, this could help the airline, especially by introduction of GST. What do you have to say uh, of that? Did you say about ATF? Uh, ATF, yeah, yeah, yeah. ATF, uh, yes, our costs are about 20% higher than neighboring countries. And then to that, you add the taxes charged by different states, up to almost 30% some places. Uh, and uh, ATF accounts for 50% of the operating cost. Now, we have tried uh, and we have written to the state governments, we have talked to them to cut down the taxes, but they are all suffering from uh, fiscal problems. So we, last year we allowed the airlines to import the ATF directly because once they import for their own use, they won't have to pay these VAT taxes and all that. Uh, but see, that requires, uh, there were a lot of problems came up because you require infrastructure. So do you think the introduction of GST could improve the situation, the GST goods and service tax? I'm saying if they agree, if the states agree to cut down the taxes, that will improve things a lot. Okay. That was the aviation business. Ajit Singh, uh, that is to the Dutashan News on board the uh, 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 Dreamliner from Delhi to London. So the minister had much to say about the Dreamliner and the aviation sector too. But what had people to say about the Dreamliner? So my trip is all about to come uh, to an end. I'm about to reach London uh, in about two hours time. So far so good. The food was nice. The ambience was nice. Entertainment was nice. Let's talk to my co-passengers. How are they feeling? Sir, uh, how are you feeling uh, the comfort level in the Dreamliner? First time uh, uh, Dreamliner uh, feels uh, very uh, comfortable moving. Traveling in this uh, Dreamliner is definitely very Charming, comfortable, and nice. Because the seats are more comfortable. That's what I've noticed. Okay. Even the service, service is very good as well. The Dreamliner is considered a game changer in the aviation industry, primarily because it is a very fuel efficient. Uh, it is made up of compost material, which makes the plane very light and even at very high altitudes, it makes you feel very comfortable, unlike other planes. With me is a very small uh, small family and uh, lunch is being served. Let's ask them, how is the lunch? Ma'am, uh, tell me, how is the food? Yes, the food is very big, it's suitable for 
तो हमने जो हमारी जर्नी है वो अमृतसर से ही थ्रू एयरपोर्ट तक है तो अमृतसर में भी स्टाफ ने बहुत हेल्प करी एक्स्ट्रा हेल्प लेट्स हाउस अदर पैसेंजर हाउ आर दे फीलिंग मैम आई आई प्रिज्यूम यू आर रेगुलर ट्रैवलर ऑन द ऑन ऑन एयर इंडिया नो नो सम टाइम आफ्टर फोर ईयर सो सो मैम प्रॉब्ली यू आर ट्रैवलिंग ऑन द ड्रीम लाइनर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम हाउ यू फीलिंग इट्स ओके बेटर नाउ बेटर देन द रेस्ट ऑफ द या लेट अस so uh, all in all a positive uh, uh, comments from every po- uh, co passenger uh, till now i have talked about we also thought why not ask the pilots about their experience I'm inside the cockpit of the Dreamliner. Lots of button. This makes the big machine go everywhere. With me is Captain uh, Mahesh Gulabani, sir. How does it feel to uh, run this uh, beautiful machine? So it's the latest machine available in the market, and we are very proud and happy to have it. Okay, sir. And sir, so your view, sir? Oh, it's a beautiful machine. Yeah. It's the latest technology uh, India could have. It's a good one. So uh, f- uh, even I am feeling very great to be inside this uh, d- uh, the cockpit of this dream machine. And after a heavy lunch everyone seated themselves comfortably as Dreamliner took its turn towards London. The distance between Delhi and London is 8000 km and the time taken by Dreamliner is 7 and a half hours. But I wonder what impact does the plane has on the environment? Well, it scores well there too. Since it uses 15% less fuel, it is definitely less cruel on the environment. Plus, it also produces 20% less emissions than today's similarly sized airplanes. Soon, my plane entered the British airspace. Time comes. London was awaiting the Dreamliner. This flight was special for another reason. It was the year 1948. Air India took its first flight from Delhi to London and history was created. 65 years later, history was repeated again. This time Air India's new Dreamliner flew from Delhi to London. It's been 65 years since the first Delhi London Air India plane flew. Today 65 years later things have changed. Today three flights both from Mumbai and Delhi connect both the cities with London. This shows how important this route is for India and Britain both. And in no time we arrived in London. The landing was smooth. The plane was given a water salute. Remember this landing completes Air India's 65th year of operations in London. Passengers including me were given a truly Indian welcome. And so finally my journey came to an end. Dreamliner landed from Delhi to London. But this was historic. Historic because on 9th of June 1948 the first flight from Delhi to London flew and today marks that event, the 65th anniversary of that event. So clearly double advantage for me. So finally I reached London and was getting ready to visit the historical city. Do give us your precious feedback at team ddbiz at the rate of gmail dot com. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.